A, lo a loaf of bread cost 50% more today than it did before the pandemic. Ground beef is up almost 50%. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire, your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. You guys, you already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. Four favor. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Hop on in. Buckle in. And let's go. Yeah! Okay, okay. Party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. All right, Ken, folks, what are we talking about today, folks? What are we talking about today? Man, oh, man, so I seen this little clip here that went viral. It's a veteran, and she shares a story. If this story here doesn't break your heart, I don't know what's wrong with you. I need this message to go out to our vice president who's running for president. I have heard all over social media about, excuse me if I say anything wrong, immigrants getting um, loans, money. It was hard for me to believe. It was just extremely hard for me to believe. I've been in business such a long time. Back in 2019, I purchased my first food truck. It cost me over $25,000. I paid it cash money. I worked hard to pay for this truck. I'm now selling it because I'm just going to, I'm doing other things, but I'm selling it. I had a guy come to look at purchasing my vehicle or my food truck. And he explained to me he's an illegal immigrant. He has no credit. He has no money in the bank, but he showed me his paperwork that he will receive funds to purchase my food truck. I'm thankful that he's buying it, but I'm hurt that I work so hard to pay cash for my food truck. I have good credit, can't even get a business loan because of the color of my skin. I have veterans in my family. I'm a veteran. I've been self-employed for so long. But somebody, please tell me, how do I work so hard to have somebody who comes to this country not long, no credit, and he shows me paperwork where they'll be funding him money to buy my food truck. And when I talked to the bank, they told me, um, usually they have to go straight to a dealership because you know, I'm, a, I'm a private sale. But for special circumstances, they're going to, you know, they allow it. But I need my president to tell me why I worked so hard all these years, all these decades. Couldn't get a business loan, but I bust my ass to get the money to create my business. And we got immigrants coming here. And they're getting money. Money! <laughs> We're doing nothing but just being here. It's not right, and I want answers. Yeah. Yeah. Illegal immigrants coming in with big fucking checks. And we just letting it happen. We're just letting it happen. I don't know what to say about that one, man. We also have another one. This one went viral, too. Now, there's something about this one here that kind of rubs me the wrong way, but let's take a look at it. How hard has inflation hit you? It, it hit me hard. It's hitting me hard. Who do you blame for it? I blame the federal government at this point. If a working-class mom who works as a paralegal cannot 
buy a $2 bell pepper because it's now five. Imagine a mother living on food stamps. Mm. Imagine a mother who's making minimum wage trying to feed children. Mm. They're killing us without killing us. If you, if you understand that. They're killing us without telling us they're killing us. They're hurting people in ways that they can't help themselves. It's either feed my child or, or how about feed my children and I don't, but I have to go work. Yeah, she blames the federal government. She will not say the name of Biden or Kamala. Makes me to believe that she's going to vote for Harris. Yeah. She's not going to do Trump because Trump is the devil. She voted for Harris the first time. She sees all the mess and she's just blamed the federal government. She's not going to say it's Harris or Biden's fault. So that makes me to believe she's going to vote again for Harris. So I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I don't care. You deal with that. What else we have going on in the news? Oh, Mr. Miss Harris finally does an interview. Mm-hmm. And they got a preview here. I called you, I was hoping you, maybe we wouldn't have to. I called you, Tim. <laughs> yes. You didn't answer, Tim. I know. I know. The, uh, <laughs> what happened? The most important call of my life. It popped up, and we didn't recognize the uh, the caller ID. And it went to, uh, it went to voicemail. Hi, this is Jim. I'm not able to answer. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Tim, it's Kamala. I really want to talk to you. <laughs> it is an amazing privilege. I'm excited. I just want to be part of the excitement that you're generating. Well, so. we're doing it together, buddy. We're doing it together. Yes, Ms. Harris does the interview with her VP pick, Timmy. Tampon Tim. Mm-hmm. It's going to be big, breaking. She's having a conversation just like Trump and Elon. Nothing that, nothing that she do is authentic. She's always copying Trump. She thinks she could outdo Trump. Unbelievable. It's so bad, right? When, um, JD Vance first told his story about he missing the call from Trump. You know, check your phone. Make sure you don't miss a call because a really important calls coming. So I'm like, oh shit, right? Either a good call or a bad call, but it's an important call. And about an hour later, I get another message from the same person who says, hey, you just missed a really important call. So uh, hey, I'm like, oh, no. So I call Trump and I'm like, hey, sir, what's going on? He's like, J.D., you missed a very important phone call. And now I'm going to have to pick somebody <laughs> else. And I'm, you know, I like tense up and almost have a heart attack. And the, the crazy thing about it is my son, who's seven, is in the hotel room with me. And he's really into Pokemon cards right now. He's going through a Pokemon phase. Are you guys into Pokemon? I was back in the day. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. a big phase right now, I think, in general. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, he's really into it. So he's trying to talk to me about Pikachu. <laughs> and I'm on the phone with Donald Trump. And I'm like, son, shut the hell up for 30 seconds about Pikachu. This is the most important phone call of my life. Please just let me take this phone call. And he doesn't care. He's like, who's, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't know what the President of the United States means. So uh, Trump hears him. And says, who is that? I'm like, that's my seven-year-old son. He's like, put him on speakerphone. <laughs> <laughs> and so I do. And he, he, he proceeds, Trump proceeds to read the statement that he's about to put out, making me his VP nominee. And he asks my son, he's like, what do you think about that? And my son's like, oh, it sounds pretty good. You know? <laughs> and he goes, okay, fine. And he hangs up the phone and the statement goes out five minutes later. And then my whole life changed. And now, Ms. Harris and Tampon Tim Got the same story as how he missed the phone call. Come on. Man, there's nothing original about this one, man. It's nothing but Hollywood. Hollywood and fakeness. AIs. Jesus Christ. She finally going to do an interview, and the interview is with Timmy. And this is the best she got. She's running away from Trump um, proposals. Trump want to do three debates. She says, no, she's going to do September 10th and maybe October. You know what they want to do in October because early voting is going to start and people that already voted, it's going to be too late for them to switch their, their vote. So she want to do a late debate in October. She don't want to do it 
September 4th or September 25th, the day before um, early voting starts, because she wants to control. She, you know she cannot come and talk to the people face to face. She's a fraud. Everybody see that now. She's running scared. And now Timmy, Tavon Timmy is doing the same thing. J.D. Vance want to do two, two debates. He just want to do one, and it's going to be again later in September. They're trying to delay as long as possible. Hopefully, people, you know, the low information voters are going to fall asleep during it. But we'll see. You know, the DNC, the Democratic National Convention starts in Monday, and they'll have a big surprise. These pro Hamas folks are going to come busting in, and they're going to be loud and raunchous. Talk about joy and change. I can't wait to, wait to see how they're going to handle this joy and change come Monday. Anyway, that's my thoughts for the day. If you guys got any value out of my content, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends and tell your mama I said hi. <laughs> All right, all right. Till next time, guys. I'll see you again. And all you pro Hamas folks, get your ass off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs>